Yo, what's good everyone? Wesley Paul here back with another one and today we are going to be looking at custom MIDI mapping in MPC Beats or MPC software. So, this one can get a little bit complicated depending on how far you want to take it, but I'm going to try and keep it as simple as I can. So, let's have a look. For the purpose of this video, I'll be using my MPK Mini Mark III, but the process works on whatever MIDI controller you're using. So once you're in the software, what you will need to do is come down to this little icon here, right at the bottom of the screen, press that button, and it brings up your MIDI Learn. So at the moment, this is the um, general one, the uh, one that's already mapped for you. And we're going to create our own one. So we're going to press on these lines here and go to new MIDI map. And here we can double click and change the name if we want to. And do it like that. Now, straight away, what you can see, you've got global here, you've got project here. So if we call this now, just say it's a, a preset. Okay, whatever you do in global sticks with this preset. So if you open up another track and use this preset, whatever you've done in global will work. Project is specifically for whatever project you are working on. Whatever you map on this side won't work on any other project. Okay, and in case you're wondering what the difference is, there are some things that you can uh, MIDI map on projects what you cannot map on global. For example, like faders on like mixers, um, like these, you cannot um, do these on the global side, but you can do it on the project side. Okay, so if we just go back to main menu here. So, first of all, um, what we're going to do is a bit of mapping. So, if I go to learn here, you would have noticed a lot of things now have been highlighted. All of these things, we can send MIDI to. Yeah. So, let's look at our Q links, for example. I press on this first Q link here. I'm going to press on my pad on my MPK. I've just sent MIDI there. And I'm going to go across. So, second one. So basically what I'm doing is I will now be able to control my cue links with my pads rather than my knobs. Okay, I'm going to press learn again so I don't accidentally map something I don't want to. So now if I press on my first pad, I'm controlling that cue link. But as you can see, when I press it and hold it, it's on, I let go, it turns off. Okay, the reason why it's behaving like that is because it thinks it's a note, like a, you know, if it was playing on the keys. So what I would need to do is come over here where it's got type and I can change the functionality here. If I, put, if I put it on toggle button and I press it once, it goes all the way up. I press it again, it comes all the way off. Uh, momentary button does sort of the same thing as note. I press and hold. It's on, let go, it's off. I can do a fix button, I press it once, it turns all the way up, I press again, it doesn't turn off. Um, and like these bottom two ones here are mostly for like knobs, on, if you're doing a knobs, I'm not using a knob, I'm using my pad. So I'm going to leave it on momentary button. Yeah. So when I press and hold like that, I let go of off. And that might seem like a weird thing to do. Um, Stay tuned for the next video if you want to see why I've done that. It will make more sense rather than explaining it now in the next in the video that's going to drop after this one. Okay, so I've done that. So what I'm going to do now though is I'm going to do it so my knobs affect the second eight Q links. So I press learn, I press on this one here and then I move the knob I want to affect it. Yeah, press on that one, move that knob, press on this one, move that knob, and so forth. Okay, press learn. Okay, and now, so if I move this, I'm cycling through the tracks. Okay. What else I'm going to do? I'm going to press learn. And I'm going to do it so my keys can do my transport functions here. 
So the play start button, I'm going to press there and then I'm going to press on my first key here. And then I'm going to do play, I want it to be that key. And then stop, I want it to be that one. Yeah, press learn. Again, it thinks it's notes. I'm going to change it to a fixed button this time. Let's see if that works. Yeah, that seems to have worked. So now. Yeah, perfect. And what I'm going to do is press learn again, and I'm going to change these menu functions so I, I can press keys and change those as well. So if I press on the first one, and then this C now is going to change that, and I'm just going to go across again. Yeah, press them. So now if I press these, uh, again, let me change these to fix buttons. Yeah, so now I can cycle through my menu pressing on these. Yeah? Cool. So let's look at the project section. So on project, what you'd have to do is add all of your own ones in here. So we're on Global C, it's already got these here for you. On project, you essentially, you're doing it from scratch. So you would have to press plus here, add that, and then you will choose what you want to affect. So just say I want to move my fader. Okay, so I've added that one in. I press learn. I move the fader that I want to affect, and then I'm going to move this knob here. And then I'm going to press learn. But here, this is something really important you need to know. I've already assigned something to this knob. So now when I'm moving it, you can see that it's moving this fader here. But if I go back to my main menu, yeah, see it's doing the, um, cycling through the tracks. It's cycling through the tracks and it's doing the program level. It's doing two things at once. So you, you, you can't do that, yeah? You can only assign each either button or knob to one, one thing. So I'm gonna have to come back here, click on it, and right click, clear MIDI mapping. Yeah, or to be fair, I can just delete it. But one thing you can do, okay? So you've already got eight programs pre-installed in your MPK. So if I press program select here, at the moment I'm on my eighth program. What I can do is press on the first one, which is the NPC, it will say NPC on the screen. And then I can do that now. So if I add something there now, uh, press learn. Now let's go back over to our mixer. Press learn. I'm going to move that fader again now and now do that knob like that. So now on this one, that's moving there. And it's only moving that. It's not moving. I'm not cycling through the tracks. I'm only moving. It's only doing the program level there. If I press program select and go back to eighth, the eighth program and move that, I'm cycling back through the tracks. Yeah. Program selects, go back there, and now I'm doing that. So I'm doing two different things. So this sort of is what I was trying to explain in the video, in the custom template video. So what you could do essentially is on one program, so on program select, on your first pad, on that one, you could just only map everything in the global um, section and not in the project, and then go to your eighth one or whichever other one you want, and then just do only stuff in project, on the project side, and then save that as a template. So then whenever you, if you want to make a beat, you don't have to constantly map side on, um, map on the project side. It's already there for you. That's what I was trying to explain. Okay. Um, but essentially... That's it. That's how you map. So if you want to know what sort of the purpose of doing this is, you might want to have... So you wouldn't go over the original one. 
um, this would just be, you would have this sort of preset if you want to do other things, like for mixing purposes. So you can, you can map like literally everything. So like I said, on global, when you press learn, it gives you everything highlighted you can do. But then on project, it's more, there's more things. It doesn't have to be highlighted like you can do your faders, you can do your sends, returns, you could do everything. So it's all about getting the most out of your, your MIDI controller. So you can literally have a preset just for mixing or just for triggering MIDI, things like that. But essentially that is how you map. Hopefully I've explained it well enough. If I haven't, let me know. Um, but stay tuned for the next video where I'm going to show you how we're going to apply this knowledge and use it to trigger um, trigger MIDI in an effect on our track. Okay, but I'm going to leave that one there. Thank you for watching. Take care. Peace out.